I always rely on my intuition, which is, we all have that, but again, it's a muscle that we need to, and more we shut up the ego voice with all the emotion and past and future and worries, so more we can, it's like a radio, more we change the channel kind of, and we connect to the divine source inside ourselves, the inner voice who always hear, by the way. Living in Afghanistan, of course, there was many situations where I could have died, but because I did follow my intuition, I avoid a big danger. And on election day, because my job is to monitor election, to see if it's free and fair, transparent, so my colleague went to the male st polling station and I went to the female polling station, because in Afghanistan it's divided. And it was uh, 6.30 morning, because I guess, for what I remember, yes, polling station opened at 7 o'clock. So I went just inside to see the preparation. So one woman was taking care of the ballot papers, another one of the ballot boxes, another one of the polling boots. And I took a picture of that and I opened the door and outside there was around 250 women already waiting on the rain, 6.30 morning, to vote and cast for a new president. I felt like a lot of very bad vibes and dark energy from my left side so I turned to see who was on the left side and what I saw really scared me. Because what I saw, it's um, somebody who scared me in the sense it was obviously a man because he was, the person was as tall as me and I'm pretty tall, right? I'm 5'11". And um, this person was this guy as a woman because of course not, not a single man is uh, welcome in a woman polling station, right? So I went outside and I, I said to my bodyguard, let's run away, it's a suicide bomber. So I, we run. And more I was running, more my inner voice was telling me, no, go back and smile to him. I said, I just cannot believe that. No way, I have to save my, myself. And the more I run, more I really heard this huge inner voice guidance you have to go back and you smile to him. I say, wait a minute, I know it's my small ego talking to me, who is talking to me right now? So I say, okay, I go back, I go back and I smile quickly and I was so scared so I run away. I did that three times and the third time he finally turned his back, look at me and smile to me and I was so scared because I remember his eyes was full of drug, kind of. and. Do you believe what I did? He took out his official jacket, put on the floor, and left. And I was thinking of his 250 women outside in the street, and he was opening the gate to go outside, and I was so scared that he blew himself in the middle of his one. So when he opened the gate, I screamed, she's going to blow! I couldn't say that in, in Farsi or Pashto, and I ran away. And surprisingly, nothing happened. But he never come back, or she never come back afterward. Mm -hmm. So what I want to say, and I guess, well, I, I never had the end of the explanation of what happened, but I do believe that this is the way of uh, facing violence. He was obviously a violent person. Uh, and uh, because I did follow my inner guidance and my source, my divine guidance, it's a non-violent way to face violence and just by a single smile and compassionate eye I managed to touch his heart, to bring him back to his human consciousness, to make it realize like maybe it was not a good idea what he plans to do. What is behind non-violence is a spiritual shift, is from here to here. No matter what's going on outside, I remain peaceful inside because it's not the external condition which is going to affect my inner peace, right? Before I didn't have a tool, but now I have a tool, so it just we need to put in practice and it's like a muscle. So if you don't do it, you go back to your former emotional state. <laughs>